Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thank you for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemus. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. A commerce insider is grilled about the boost program on Capitol Hill. And testimony continues in front of a legislative panel, which may end soon. Also, four men arrested for ice spice that were arranged deals. In sports, we bring you a goodie, but only. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. season get your goods here with care and attention using Micronesian air cargo services. Max is all about connections. Daily flights to and from Guam four times a week to Rota. Bi-weekly flights to Tinian. We are connecting the Marianas. So you do the shopping and we'll do the shipping. Perishable goods, Home Depot furniture and appliances, even live animals quickly and cost effectively. Operating since 2013. Check out our Thursday special to Rota from Guam and Saipan. Call Max at 670-288-6227. If it fits, we'll take it. And there you have it. McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich. From the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich. From the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich. From the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich. You'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Wami and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Wednesday, December 28, 2022. Boost was a program that was designed to build the NMI tax base and help with the economic recovery. But did insiders get most of the boost money? And did they fund their own businesses? That's what a house panel wants to find out. Jess Tysigui was one of three review panelists that looked at the business plans of boost applications. The Department of Commerce employee says the panel didn't keep written scores or review the applications in any sort of predetermined order. The two other panelists were the Governor's Chief of Staff, Will Castro, and Finance Secretary David Attelig. Tysigui testified without an attorney this week in front of a House panel. Which businesses did you declare a conflict of interest that you could not participate. E. Lovebirds. Lovebirds? Okay. What is Lovebirds? It's the name of a company, okay. bar and restaurant. Where is it located? It's at Tinian. How much was Lovebirds, the restaurant and bar in Tinian, awarded? The one, the company that you are part owner of. I recuse myself, Nino. But how much were they awarded? I don't think I should comment on that, so recusal. But you are a recipient, you are a part owner. The company is a recipient. But you are a part owner, you said. So how much was the birds awarded? Nino. 
Yeah, yeah, get record, you know. We want you to state it for the record. Urikyusu. Lovebirds was awarded $225,000. The questions continued. Was there any other businesses that you recused yourself from? Ungan. Okay, what's the other business? E. Saipan Horse Course. Saipan Horse Course, you recused, I'm sorry, you recused yourself, stating there's a conflict of interest. Um, are, you part, are you part owner of Saipan Horse Course? Oh, yeah. you, what is your conflict of interest for Saipan Horse Course? True Business Associations. Business Associate? B business Associations? Mm. Is that answer? Okay. What other... What other conflicts of interest did you uh, recuse yourself for? What other businesses, sir? We have Lovebirds. We have Saipan Horse Course. Are there any no, others? you're true. No. Flower Tea House. For the record, Saipan Horse Course was awarded $200,000 on October 21st, 2022. Flower Tea House was awarded two boost grants. Company sells tea in the Garapan area, and Taisegui says they are open sometimes, but due to economic conditions, have been closed oftentimes as well. Taisegui says he verbally recused himself from reviewing the applications that he had a business interest or association with, but can't remember if he left the room or not. Let the record reflect that Flower Tea House was awarded 125000 on October 27, 2022, and again, a second award of $200,000 on December 13th, 2022, for a total of $325,000. You may proceed, Rep. Ed. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Taitsugui, what other businesses did you recuse yourself from? Saipan Goddess. Saipan Goddess. Can you explain to us what is Saipan Goddess? What business is that? My proposal for my Oxan Saipan Tourism Center. Where is it? Where is it located, sir? Marpi. In Marpi. This company is proposing to build a tourism center. Again. So proposing. Follow-up questions came from Representative Tina Sablon. You recuse yourself from Flower Tea House, Saipan Goddess, Saipan Horse Course, Lovebirds Restaurant. Any other business? Sakura Group. Sakura Group. And what was, why did you recuse yourself from that one? Uh, business associations. Business associate. And how much did Sakura Group receive? Is it a coincidence, Mr. Taisegui, that all of the applications that you claim you recuse yourself from were all awarded very generous amounts by the remaining review panelists? No comment on that. I recuse myself. Are you pleading the fifth for that, or are you just refusing to answer? I'm telling you that I recuse myself. And are you saying that they these all these applications totaling over a million dollars were just randomly picked from the stacks by Mr. Castro and Mr. Atzelig? Same thing, I recuse myself. Are you recusing yourself from answering this question? Or are you pleading the fifth? I'm telling you that I can't answer that because I recuse myself. Privilege, Madam Chair. Say your privilege. My apologies, Hulk. Earlier, you just answered me, Mr. Taisugui, that you said yes, you would, you would 
grab your stacks and each individually review these applications, correct? Ongen. So you're telling me that out of thousands of applications, these random companies that you're associated with were randomly drawn by a fate of luck? Ongen. <laughs> I don't know. I have a hard time believing that. If other applicants were to ask you to show them how this program was fairly applied, how these funds were fairly distributed, how all these applications were fairly reviewed, how would you answer them? I have no comment on that. I have Jess no comment Tyson, on that. He completed his testimony this afternoon, even after he stated he felt that he was badgered by the lawmakers. The co-chairwoman of the Joint Committee says they hope to complete the boost hearings this week, before the new year, and before the incoming members of the legislature take their seats. Chairwoman Selena Babauta of the House Committee on Judiciary and Governmental Operation states they will be wrapping up the boost hearings this week. So far, the committee has listened to the testimonies of the Governor's Chief of Staff, William Kostru, Bank of Saipan CEO, John Arroyo, and Commerce employee, Suze Taisigui. But according to Babauta, the testimonies given doesn't seem to match. As everyone has witnessed uh, through the publication of our our hearings, uh, there's contradictions among all the witnesses that we've called to testify. So um, we hope to wrap this up by this week and produce a committee report uh, detailing our findings and, and all of that. Former Finance Secretary David Atalik, the third member of the review panel, is expected to appear soon before the committee. He requested for um, an extension because he couldn't find an attorney here on island. And then subsequent to that, he departed Saipan on, I believe, December 26th is what he told us for medical reasons. And he'll be back on January 2nd. Um, so we will wait until he returns. The committee will submit a final report of their findings and their plans moving forward. Uh, the primary uh, plan is to recommend legislation in the next, next legislature. As you know, we're closing out this term, um, and our committee report will stipulate what our plans are for, based on what we have seen and heard and the evidence that was submitted, and we're still waiting for more. Babata adds they are awaiting more documents from Kostru. Those documents are currently being reviewed by his legal counsel. The official status of the boost program is unclear at this moment, but the Bank of Saipan has stated they will no longer be administering the program. So far, there are more than 200 companies who have been awarded boost money, along with 190 fishers, farmers, and ranchers who received their 500 stimulus award. The boost awards has totaled to more than $10 million. Babauta says she will not comment on or advise boost recipients what to do, but says the feds are probably already involved. Federal Bureau of Investigation has already involved themselves with something to do with Bank of Saipan. We don't know what it is at this point. All we know is through uh, the words of one of the witnesses, Mr. Arroyo, that it was a subpoena that was served on Bank of Saipan. But as to the topic, we don't know. We haven't heard from anybody um, why the Federal Bureau of Investigation was at Bank of Saipan. Babauta says the next set of legislators are welcome to continue the boost hearings. The incoming legislature is set to take oath of office on January 9, 2023. The next witness to testify before the committee will be Bank of Saipan's Karen Callen. She is set to appear at 1030 before the legislature. In court, four individuals are arrested for drug trafficking after authorities conducted several sting operations. Four arrest warrants were executed by the Sinemai Drug Enforcement Task Force for the possession and trafficking of a controlled substance, crystal methamphetamine. 44-year-old June Sia, a.k.a. Tragic, is being charged with count one trafficking and count two possession. 
41-year-old Larry Angwi is being charged with count one trafficking and count one possession. 55-year-old Norbert Cabrera is also being charged with count one trafficking and count one possession. And 53-year-old Ray Angwi is being charged with count one trafficking and count one possession. All four defendants have bail set at $100,000. Assistant Public Defender Tyler Scott will be representing each individual in their separate cases. Steve Kessel will be representing the Sinai government. Court documents state June, a.k.a. Tragic, allegedly sold nearly $400 worth of meth in three separate buy-walk operations outside the Club 888 establishment in Garapan. The total weight of drugs sold amounted to almost two gross grams. As for Larry Angwi, DETF officials conducted two separate biwalk operations where he allegedly sold $320 worth of drugs to a cooperating source. The operation took place at his residence in Chalancanoa. Norbert Cabrera also allegedly sold drugs at his residence in Chalan Piao. According to a police report, Cabrera sold $100 worth of drugs. The drugs, according to the CS, was kept in his eyeglass case. And Ray Angwi, who resides in Chalancanoa, allegedly sold $50 worth of drugs to a cooperating source. The four defendants are set to return for a preliminary hearing on January 4. All right, coming up, CNMI Governor-elect shares more of his thoughts on the Boost program. Stay tuned. Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Docomo Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. The largest show in the Pacific is looking for dancers to work on Guam. The show, Carrera, an island, a journey, an adventure. This is a unique opportunity for dancers from Saipan, Tinian, Rota, and beyond. Polynesian and contemporary dancers for one show nightly, five days per week, offering competitive pay, airline flights, and even housing for off-island hires. Join the cast and experience working with a world-class creative team that has worked with Madonna, Celine Dion, U2, and Cirque de Soleil. Show now in pre-production. It will begin in March. Casting call on now. Up to 40 dancers are needed. Send bios and photos to casting at baldiga.com. Sandcastle Guam. Casting call. Apply now. Subway just dropped an all-new menu of 12 sandwiches. They call it the Subway Series. The Subway Series has four new categories of subs. Cheesesteaks, Italianos, chicken, and clubs. With a sandwich series like that, I'll be a happy Subway cereal eater. Subway Series, what's your pick? Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Governor-elect Arno Palacios comments on the Boost program and plans for a Secretary of Finance position. The panel also asked Jess Tysigui questions about companies that applied in November and were awarded money less than a month later. Dash Car Wash, a proposed business, applied in November and was awarded $200,000 on December the 12th, also $200,000 for Magalahi Grill. Those that received large second awards earlier this month include the administrator of the program, Bank of Saipan, Pacific Funeral Services, Motion Automotive, which got an additional $150,000, SUI Corporation, $190,000, Galaxy 2 Snack Bar, $75,000, Glenda Cabrera Property Rental with $100,000, and Flower Tea House with another $200,000. Governor-elect Arnold Palacios. There's a lot of detailed revelations from the, the, the legislative hearings, and so that brings to question the whole credibility of this program and how it was launched. So, would I continue it? 
no, I will not continue it. I will put a hole on it and see whether there's ways to remedy the program. And if not, we'll just say, well, we're going to stop it. Uh, it. It serves no purpose for the community. And maybe we should shift that to, to re revisit it later on uh, because uh, Do you think we'll see indictments coming out of this? Probably. You know, you never know. Uh, obviously, you know, I, I, I don't, I say this with a great reservation that uh, Mr. Athelic, who is the Secretary of Finance, uh, has uh, resigned and has moved on, but he is going to be on the hot seat, and I hope that he does lawyer up. These people have to lawyer up. Uh, because, you know, just by listening and watching it, they're throwing each other under the bus, so to speak. We, we go back to that and like, you know, they should have done this, they should have done this, and, this. and it, it's kind of crazy that the three of them never, according to the president back in Saipan, never got together, taken a look at it, and you know, we don't, they didn't even have an organizational structure on how to go about making those decisions and even an administrative person to say, okay, here are the applications for, for these type of businesses, here are the applications for, for this kind of businesses, and for Rota, for Tinian, for Saipan, and, and they didn't even have an administrative arm that was, that was putting these things in order. Uh, for the record, do you have any, did you have any boost applications for any small businesses or no. any immediate family members that no. were involved in it? No. 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 They'll probably get jumped. <laughs> I, uh, no. What are the concerns you're hearing from people in the community uh, as these hearings went on this week? How, how much? Uh, how much, how corrupted the system has become. Uh, and they've been saying that, you know, this is only the 17 million. I had $480 million that we, or $460 million that we got. What happened to the rest? How was that spent? Was that spent properly? Were we compliant with those? And I hope we, we were, uh, but, you know, uh, how much is left of the, the ARPA funds, for example? Do you, have, do you have somebody in mind for Secretary of Finance? That's going to be a key, yeah, key position. Yeah, it's going to be key. It's going to be uh, whoever takes over that position is going to have a lot of work. And well, we ha I have, you know, several uh, possible candidates. Uh, I haven't really sat down with uh, with. Uh, Lieutenant Governor-elect to, to look at look at that and maybe he also has a short list of individuals and we have to sit down before probably before the inauguration and and at least that position and the position of DPS uh, are going to be at the forefront in Homeland Security. Kilili's community project funding brings $27 million to the Marianas. Congressman Gregorio Kalili Sablon announces that U.S. President Joe Biden has signed into law a spending bill worth nearly $27 million for several projects across the Commonwealth. In a release from Kalili's office, the 2023 project funding is an increase over the $4.5 million obtained last year. The Commonwealth Office of Transit Authority will receive funding for bus shelters, bus transfer stations, and covered bus parking. Kilili has also appropriated funds for the Northern Marianas College for their facilities and equipment, and the public school system for its language immersion program. The island's only hospital will also receive funding for its parking space expansion and dialysis in Tinian. Funding will also go to the Department of Public Works, the Commonwealth Utilities Corporation, and the Jotun Kizu Library. All right, folks, don't go anywhere. We have sports up next.
Need a new phone? Trade in now and get up to $500 off our best 5G devices. Trade in your older phone in any condition and step up to better savings and speeds only our 5G network can provide. Check out our website and catch up on the best mobile experience. Trade in now. Docomo Pacific, better together. Green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They're an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. Keep vehicles off the beach. Use the sea turtle stranding hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. Call 287-8537 and save a turtle. Sing along to your favorite hits with live music from the Gigolos. Godfathers has daily food and drink specials, like Taco Tuesdays. The best pizza on island every day of the week. Located on Palm Street in Garrapin. Tonight Sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Buenas Sports fans. Tonight's sports report, we bring you an annual event that only happens towards the end of each year. It's called the Island Relay. We're taking you back to 2017 with this oldie but goodie. The last sunrise of 2016 away runners at the last command post finish line in Marpee. The 13.7 mile race started over at the Pacific Islands Club, went north, first on Beach Road, then over to Challen, Polly Arnold, with support vehicles all the way. Joshua Berger, though, needed a last second recruitment. Good morning. We, we started with three, so I had to pay Kubo five bucks to run with us. He was on the side of the road. Now I just teasing. We five had to dollars, you gotta he get. Worked, he worked till six o'clock, so we had to pick him up on the way. But you can always count on Danny Calvo to be in the run. Luta. Did you run all the way from Luta? No, yeah, I swim and run. <laughs> I'm always here. All right. Ooh. Hey, good morning! For the second year in a row, a team from Agape Christian School finishes first. That school also won the all-schools cross-country meet. Well, running is part of their curriculum. School administrator, Pastor Pong. Yes, all have to run. We believe all the students have uh, potential. We just need to get them onto the track or onto the road to run so that they can keep fit. Especially running is very easy. You do not need any equipment. You just run. As, uh, the more you run, the better you are. A Tudela clan team headed by Vincent Tudela plays second. Uh, we've been aiming for these kids since last year. They really took it on us. And this year, just whew, we tried our best, but they're still hey, pretty bad. Hey, but second's better than eighth. Second's better than eighth, that's for sure. We just wanted to end the year with a good run. There was a rainbow. Yeah, Team Rainbow headed by Saipan super runner Mommy Burger. 
A rainbow sock. Yeah, the rainbow sock. Oh, oh rainbow. Heart, Do you feel like a rainbow? a rainbow? You look like a rainbow. Thank you. Uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. New Year resolution? A lot. First of all, health. Be nice to your friends. And uh, keep running. All right, way to go, mommy. You're going to have to go back and get your shirt. Yeah. All right, good job. Whoa. Hey, look. It's Team Animu. Yeah. <laughs> Is that why you got Ramel on your team? Because you wanted to be the best? Uh, okay, all right. All of you. It's a team effort. It's truly really a team effort. Way to go, Team Animu. But not everyone at the finish line was competing. That's cheating. Can't <laughs> Saipan International School fielded a couple of teams, and this team, uh, well, I forgot their name. Better than we thought. We were, we were passing people left and right. Really? And Are I you on team, team uh, what? Team uh, Troxman. Teams were on fire. Troxman. You guys were on fire? I don't remember that name. Little elves from the North Pole visited just for wow. this competition. Hey, look, it's the Pacific Islands Club finishing ahead of Team DFS. T Galleria. Oh! It looks like you led your team to 12th place. Uh, all good. We finished. It's all good, right? Yep. All right. Happy New Year. Oh, happy New Year. Uh, New Year's resolution. Uh, stay healthy with the family, friends, and everyone around the world. And next year, 11th place. 11th place. Yes, that's a new goal. That's right. While the years may change, Chang Chang never does. 13.7 miles Chang running barefoot. Think of all the money that he saved from not buying shoes. Sing hallelujah. We made it through 2016. Yay! Move Marianas, yeah. Hi, I'm Dre, one of the personal trainers here at Ghost Gym, and today we're going to go over the kettlebell deadlift. Fantastic exercise to build overall strength, particularly in the legs and hips. Remember, we want to make sure that our setup is in good position. If, you're, if, you, if you set up in a bad position, it's not going to look good and it's certainly not going to feel good. So a common setup, error setup is a, obviously a rounded upper back. Two simple ways of correcting that. All I'm going to have Vince do here is extend his arms up here and all he's going to do is think about reaching long and pushing his hips back. Reach long and push your hips back. So as you can see, he's already in good position. Now he, all he's going to do is grab that kettlebell. He's got tension in his legs and in his back. All he's going to do is just stand up tall, finish with his glutes. weather report tonight is windy partly sunny with isolated showers northeast winds 25 to 35 miles per hour highs around 84 with a 20 percent of showers tomorrow partly cloudy and breezy with isolated showers east winds 20 to 25 miles per hour highs near 85 lows around 76 the chance of showers is at 20 percent for the marine forecast Fresh to strong trade winds and combined seas of 9 to 11 feet are expected for the Marianas coastal waters through the weekend. Northwesterly swell will subside as northeasterly swell and wind waves increase. A small craft advisory is now in effect for hazardous wind and waves through Sunday night. The ling lingering shear line is also expected to maintain wet weather for Guam coastal waters through Thursday. High tide tonight will be at 1.17 p.m. followed by low tide at 7.36 p.m. Sunrise will be at 6.42 a.m. and the sunset at 5.56 p.m. 
And that does it for your Wednesday edition of the new sports and weather here in the Marianas. As always, thank you so much for watching the Channel 2 News. We hope you have a great night and we'll see you back on Friday.